Happy 2023. Hello everyone. If you are just joining the channel today, I am Angie. Uh, this is my channel for food, fitness, fun, mindset, basically helping busy working moms find an easy and effortless way to be the healthiest fit version of themselves. Because I know you have a lot of demand in your life. You get pulled a lot of different directions. And I want to make sure that the way you eat and the way you move and the way that you think is just easy and automated and gives you the best results possible. So welcome. If you're new here, do me a favor. If you could click that red button, hit subscribe so you get notification for future videos, that would be awesome. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up. So I would say one of the biggest requests that I get on this channel and over on Facebook and Instagram is more easy ways to meal prep with a family in mind, with weight loss goals in mind, with busy schedules in mind, and how to do it on a budget. So I thought going into 2023, a lot of us are probably thinking about getting back to our health and fitness or getting started with our health and fitness, and we know when we think about what is gonna actually move the needle with results and with just finding a rhythm and a routine that works for us, it does start a lot with the food that we eat. So how do we take it from the grocery store to prep it, to our plate, to our mouth, and get the results that we want. So I was gonna do a big meal prep video today showing you obviously the star of the show first and how I prep protein and build plates from there and then how I add on with carbs and fats and make my meal prep literally take minutes. No, it does not have to take all Sunday afternoon to do, and you won't find yourself at the end of the week just throwing out a bunch of maybe pre-made recipes or, or meals that you made. You are gonna find how to do this efficiently and how to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to the food that you prep and how to get results. Let's get started. Okay, so here's a pro tip I wanted just to start with. I like to think about the flow of how my meal prep is gonna go, starting with the protein. The protein is generally what takes the most time to actually prep, but if you think about the method that you're gonna do, this actually saves you a lot of time. So I know one method of the way I'm gonna cook my protein today is in the Instant Pot. Another method is going to be in the oven. So those proteins could actually be going at the same time saving me time because I'm doing them together. We're also gonna grill up some burgers. Paul actually takes care of that, so maybe by the time I have something in the oven and the chicken in the Instant Pot, I'll start patting the burgers so Paul can throw those on the grill. And then we also bought ground beef to go as like, I don't know, like beef crumbles, right? For tacos, for Sloppy Joes, for spaghetti. So then I can have another method of cooking going on in the stove. And I will have four different protein sources going at once, and then I can start focusing on the carbs and fats that I'm going to prep to make meals in minutes. So think, strategize in advance, what makes sense for your flow, and then you can start setting out your stations, and so all you have to do is execute. Okay, so this is what I meant by set up my stations. This is going to be my baked chicken tenderloin station. This is for my ground beef. The oven is preheating. I've got my sheet with parchment paper for my baked tenderloins. I've got the Instant Pot ready with the ingredients I'm gonna use, vinegar and salt. And then I got my chicken prepped. By the way, I did not time that. It took me 30 seconds to chop some tenderloins for the baked ones and then the rest will go in the Instant Pot. So easy peasy and protein prep is going down. Okay, pro tip number two, if you wanna save a lot of time, prep your protein in bulk. So if you're thinking about if you're just cooking for yourself or you're cooking for a family, how many meals do you get out of a protein source? And maybe you're gonna have to double the pounds or triple the pounds to get more than one meal out of it. And so the boys eat what Paul and I eat. They also like cottage cheese for their protein and string cheese and turkey and dino nuggets. And so I kind of know that if I cook about three pounds of chicken, now I've done the math on this, and then we do about five pounds 
tons of ground beef and we also have egg whites on hand and we have cottage cheese, we have protein powder. We're, we're gonna be okay in terms of protein, but really pick and choose how much your family eats. And then I always recommend choosing about two to three protein sources to go ahead and prep in bulk that actually take you making the proteins and then have other ones readily available that you can throw together in minutes. And so part of my meals that I'm eating for dinner are protein pancakes. So all I have to do is take the egg whites with the cottage cheese and the oats, put it in a blender and I fry up a pancake. So those don't require me any prep until I decide to assemble the meal and cook it. Now I am prepping today, which I already mentioned, chicken, and ground beef. Those are the main ones because we'll have our other sources in the fridge. So pro tip, pro tip two, decide the amount of protein you and your family will eat and prep two to three sources in bulk and then have other ones readily available that are just grab and grow. Grab and go. Oh my goodness. Pro tip number three, because I have my pods ready to go. I like to make meal prep fun. So first I choose a time of the week where I'm not stressed out and it just feels like one more thing I have to do. I like to make an experience with it. So I choose a time and then I just kind of watch as my ingredients get lower and I just replenish them. So maybe I prep a couple times a week, a few times a week, but anytime I'm doing it, I do something else to add to the quality of my life, which obviously nutritious food does that. So I might listen to a podcast, which I'm gonna do right now, or an audiobook. I let the boys help me out. They think it's the most fun thing ever. I'll turn on, my TV's right in front of me so I can turn on a show I wanna watch, but make it fun, make it an experience, and it won't just feel like one more thing you have to do. Okay, so here we go. I told you I was gonna time it, so I'm gonna hit start in a second. And I'm gonna show you my three ingredient shredded instant pot chicken. You've probably seen me put this out there on YouTube before, but if you have a big family and you want a lot of protein made in a very short amount of time, this is your recipe. So let's see how long it takes me to prep it. And then once it comes up to pressure, it's 35 minutes, quick release, and you're done. You can just shred it and put it right into the refrigerator. So here we go. Salt, vinegar, and chicken. I am starting the timer now. Okay, now you wanna do the salt liberally, so both sides, so I'm gonna flip it over and make sure it hits it all. Vinegar, again, make sure it's enough that it can hit both sides of your chicken. So now I'm just kinda of tossing the chicken in there. I have this camera really low right now. All right, lid going on, plugging it in. What's going on here? The, oh my God, the valve is sealed. What is wrong with me? And all I have to do is hit the meat button, 35 minutes. And stopping this pretty quick. One minute and four seconds. Chicken from the refrigerator, from the store, salt and vinegar. I'll let that rip and now I'm gonna get started on my baked chicken tenderloins. The oven is heating up to 425. Let's rock and roll. Okay, so I wanted to show you this from start to finish. Now I'm gonna do baked chicken tenderloins. This tastes really good with Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, but if you only have like panko ones or you wanna just take some old bread and toast it and then just pulverize it, you can do that too. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the breadcrumbs and some cayenne pepper. I like it a little spicy. So I'm gonna show you this from start to finish. I did already slice up my chicken tenderloins, which I wanted to put half in the Instant Pot in here. Let's say that took me 30 seconds, all right? So here we go, start to finish. I'm gonna put them in the oven for about seven minutes and I'm looking for the internal temp, which if you do not have a meat thermometer and it's electric one, that is key for really great protein cooking. So that would be pro tip number four, get a meat thermometer. I'm looking for it to be about 160, 165 in the center. They should quick cook because it's 425 and we'll see. Okay, let me get to the timer. Reset from that one, here we go. We're starting. You know, I should mention, if you're making this for kids, maybe omit the cayenne pepper. Uh, I generally do make some, and now I've already made all my breadcrumbs cayenne pepper, but usually I make some plain ones for the boys, and they love it. Oh, and adding a little Parmesan cheese to your breadcrumbs, so good. All right, here we go.
Great news, I ran out of breadcrumbs, so now I can make some for the boys too. So I just mix my salt in with the panko, and I'm gonna finish up the last four tenderloins. Okay, so, let's move that over for a minute here. We're looking at four minutes of prep time. And I just didn't measure enough panko breadcrumbs. Could have been quicker and I stopped to talk. So four minutes to prep. Now we're gonna pop it into the oven. Again, I'm doing 425, I'm doing a higher cook time. I'm gonna try seven minutes, I'll pull it out, I'll use my meat thermometer, we'll see where we're at. Then we'll be good to go. Protein number two, almost all prepped and ready to go. And it's pretty easy. So already with my budget for the chicken alone for three pounds, it was $12. And those are like natural organic chicken breasts. Uh, for the burgers, which I'm gonna show you right now, we patted them as four ounce patties. Put them on the grill. Paul does like a few minutes per side. They're done perfectly. We like to, to actually measure out the side to or the size to have even cook time. And then he just used some like good shit seasoning for both sides. So those are done. They're in the fridge ready to go. So our ground beef, I think, we buy 96 lean ground beef, and that was probably, I think it was 20, it was $12 for two pounds, so we're at $24, plus our 12, 36 so far for protein, not bad, right? And then egg whites don't cost that much, neither do cottage cheese, so you could probably feed your family uh, on $50 worth of protein, which is pretty good. Okay, let me actually put this in the oven. Okay, so while that chicken is baking and the Instant Pot chicken is going, I just kind of want to show you those convenience proteins. So hold on. I am gonna go move over and do our ground beef here in a second. Uh, I'll just go ahead and pull that out. Let me see how many pounds this was. Okay, this is two pounds. So we did two pounds of burgers, which are patted and cooked in here. So we ate a bunch already last night. So again, when I told you we kind of spread it out, we wanted these fresh last night, but now we have leftovers, plus we have more beef to play with. And then we keep a lot of egg whites on hand in this family. Paul likes to put them in his shake. He puts them in his oatmeal. He obviously makes egg white scramblers. I do a lot more egg white scramblers and protein pancakes. So we just have good old egg whites right there, ready to go in the fridge. We have normal eggs in here, of course. And then, quick and easy protein source, string cheese. It's the easiest. We have lunch meat for another convenience one, so just oven roasted turkey. And then the last main protein source that I would say we eat a lot of is cottage cheese, and so do the boys. So I might use it as a snack and put some fruit on it. Again, I make it with the protein pancakes. I actually love putting it in omelets, or you mix it in with your ground beef and some marinara with zucchini noodles or pasta, and you have a really good meal in minutes. So those are more of my convenience proteins. And then in the pantry, I guess I can just show you. Let's bring you with me. How are we looking in here post the holidays? My go-to, it's still PE Select, and uh, this one is mint cookie. Paul has been enjoying that one a lot in his shakes in the morning. Again, he puts egg whites in it to bump the protein. And then I just like the good base of their gourmet vanilla to make a lot of different things with. So, that's more of our protein prep. Let's get going on the ground beef, and then I'm gonna show you how I do carbs and fats, but it's gonna be quick, because I wanted this video to be all about simply prepping protein, is because, remember, it's the star of the show. If you've been around, then you know in the Angie Method, we think about our meal assembly or our meal prep, turning it into meals as movie casting, and the movie always starts with the, the, actor, the main actor or actress, and that's the protein. And then you think about who's gonna support the actor or actress. Your supporting actress is your carbohydrate, the vessel you serve stuff with, Rounding it out with adding some flair to it, your variety, costumes, lighting, that's your good fats, your sauces, your spices, all of that stuff. But really, the bulk of taking a meal and making it starts with the protein, so that's where your prep should be focused. That saves you time, it makes you more efficient, and then by just prepping the ingredients, you won't end up wasting food by the end of the week because you're just assembling a meal based on your mood with food, which is where your lighting and your costume, your good fats, your sauces, your spices come into play. So I'm gonna take that chicken and I'm gonna have it like five different ways this week, or I will take the egg whites and have scramblers and then I'll have protein pancakes and then I'll mix it in protein shakes. So I'm not just having it the same way all the time. That's how you meal prep in minutes and you meal prep for a family and you do it on a budget. So there we go.
Oh, I didn't realize I'm filming. I'm prepping for the ground beef, getting it all ready. Just pulled out my onion powder for seasoning and pepper boop, boop, and salt. I like to season it simply, so we can change it into a lot of different things throughout the week. Uh, so I already talked with Paul and I'm like, hey, let's plan on doing taco bowls and then we can do marinara sauce like normal spaghetti. And then we actually like taking G Hughes barbecue and just mixing it in with some no sugar added ketchup. And we make sloppy joes like open face ones, which is really good. Or you can make it more like chili flavored with some tomato sauce and put it um, it's so good. Either in a sweet potato or a baked potato, like your own version of like chili, but just with the meat. You can add beans, you can add vegetables, but with some cheese and sour cream or Greek yogurt, super good. Okay, alarm timer just went off for the chicken, so I have my thermometer ready. We love this one. I have no idea what brand it is. Thermopin, it's just your good old Thermopin. Here we go. Okay, it's been a while since I've made these. I think I underestimated by half the amount of baking time. So I could just see it was still clear. So I'm going for another seven minutes and then we'll recheck it. Okay. Hey, I'm not perfect. I just like to prep. Let's go. Skillet ready. I am going to turn my gas on to medium, medium high heat. I am gonna spray it because I just feel like sometimes my nonstick pans still stick. Let me grab my beef. Okay, I'll tell you how long it takes. Now this is two pounds of meat, okay? I am gonna use my hands, what do they always say, your best kitchen tools, to break it up now. Wash hands. Okay, now to optimize on time right now, I do steamable bags of frozen veggies. I mean, I don't mind doing fresh, but sometimes when I don't have that much time to even chop or even want to get a pot on the stove with water, I just, I mean, I default to frozen veggies all the time, and the boys love these. I love them reheated, like on the plate or cold. Really good is if you have them in the fridge, you can pull them out cold, you take some stevia with red wine vinegar and you put that in there with a little salt and pepper, and then you can add other veggies to it and maybe like a pop of feta and some leftover chicken. It is so good. If you want another bump of a carb besides your veggies, you can put rice too. But I don't think I need to like tell you how to make these in the microwave, just follow the directions. I'm gonna do that though while the ground beef is going so then I have the green beans ready to go. I will do the exact same thing with um, steamable bags of broccoli right after this. They're six minutes, so those will go a while while the protein's going. Okay, chicken has two more minutes, so I'll check that in a second. So while this is going, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some of my dishes from before and start getting out what I will store the food in. But so far, because I started with the Instant Pot Chicken, which takes 35 minutes, it's only been 15 minutes. Plus I've been having to move my camera around and I'm a ch I've been chatting with you. So imagine how fast this could be when you have thought out what your family enjoys eating, you think about protein first, and you think about all the ways you could turn it into meals, it makes meal prep so fast and easy. So I'll just leave it on the beef and we'll just speed this up. And then I'll show you how long it took for the beef to brown and we'll be good to go. <laughs> Let me talk to you about what I was just doing. So when it comes to chicken, I don't mess around with chicken or pork. I like to make sure that it's 160, 165, uh, so it's all the way cooked through. And so the tenderloins were slightly different thickness just because I cut them myself. So I did pre-take a temp for all of them and then I pulled out the ones that were definitely already done. So you can see those in there and now I'll let them cool off. I just put the last couple ones in there for like two to three minutes and I think they'll be done after that. And I am rounding out with the ground beef. There's just a couple pieces in here that are still pink. So, yeah, nope, actually, that looks good. So this is 96.4, which means it's pretty lean. There's not that much fat that drained out of it. But if you use a fattier cut, I like to, Take a colander, right, like that you would strain your pasta with, and drain your drain your pasta with? Okay, and then I put underneath it a grocery bag lined with a ton of paper towels, and then I pour the meat into the strainer, and 
all of the grease gets caught in the bag with the paper towels and then I go ahead and store it. But this one honestly doesn't have much fat at all, like just 4%. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move it over to my glass Pyrex and then that's one more thing done. I'm gonna take my green beans out of the microwave, put them in the storage, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with my carrots next. Okay, hold up. It was 12 minutes I just noticed from putting it in the pan, getting it browned all the way to storage. So 12 minutes while your chicken was going and you had green beans going and you already had almost your baked chicken tenderloins done. Pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, that little chicken tenderloin is really good. Uh, see how I got a nice little browning on the crust? So if you're someone that's like, oh, I can't eat chicken or protein or whatever, there is a key to cooking it, so it's actually palatable. And so that ended up taking 15 minutes for those tenderloins at 425. Now they're done, they're cooling down, we're good to go. I don't know if I'm on pro tip number five, but if you also wanna make your protein taste really good, you have to season it. So many people are like, oh, I don't really enjoy you know, pork tenderloin or chicken or beef or whatever, and if you don't eat meat, I understand that as well, but there's a lot of plant-based proteins out there, but you have to season it. So really, it's don't be scared of using salt, okay? If you are eating a lot of single ingredient foods, you're controlling most of your sodium intake anyway. And protein loves salt. It helps keep it tender. A lot of alarms going off. Helps keep it tender and it gives it a lot of flavor. So I do salt all of our protein and tastes really good and that'll be good heated up. So there we go. Okay, the Inch Pot Chicken has five minutes left. So I wanted to show you what I'm gonna do with my carrots, which is going to be one of my main carb sides this week. The boys do like them, they don't like them raw. So I'm actually gonna start them in the Instant Pot for three minutes with one cup of water. You do not have to peel your carrots, you can eat the skin, it's fine, so that saves you a lot of time. So then I'll keep some of them just steamed for them as a part of their meal. And then for myself and Paul, I'm gonna get a little fancier. So we'll probably just have this as a side with our burger or chicken or whatever it is. Maybe, maybe I'll mix it into like a salad. I love cold cooked carrots in a salad for different flavor, but I am going to par cook them right in the steamer and I'm keeping the oven at 425. I already have my baking sheet ready to go with a new piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna toss it with a coconut oil spray, some maple syrup, salt, and I think I'm gonna do Italian seasoning mix. I think the sweet and the salt with the Italian will be good. Roast them up for a different flavor and then I'll have another carb. And then the other main carb sources that we are doing are the oats this week fruit, which I don't have to really prep. I'll either buy it cut up or cut it when we want it. And then oats, fruit, carrots, oh, and sweet potatoes, which I already did those. I just put them in the Instant Pot for 35 minutes, again, with one cup of water, and it's really beautifully done and tender, or I will do them in the oven. So I wash them and then just slightly dry them so the skin stays wet, wrap them in foil, put them on a baking sheet in the oven at a high temp until you can pierce through them. They are so delicious. And so that's our other main carb. Simple, easy. We have whole grains on hand too. We have different rice if we want it, like in bags that we can throw in the microwave. I have couscous and quinoa on hand. We have beans in a can on hand. So carbs are so easy when it comes to prep. And then we have pasta on hand if we want it. So I'm gonna finish chopping up these carrots so when the chicken goes off in two minutes, we can quick release it. I'll show you how easy it is to shred. We'll get these going in the Instant Pot and then wrap up with those in the oven and that's it. Easy peasy. Okay, can you see that? It's literally just falling apart in the tongs. So I'm gonna move it over to the Pyrex and then we'll be good to go and I'll pop in the carrots. Okay, so since the chicken is done and then I have the carrots going, it's been about 40 minutes from the time I've started talking to you and everything that I have done. So, so far we have the chicken tenderloins are done, the uh, ground beef is done, the Instant Pot chicken is done, the broccoli and the green beans are done, the carrots are in there ready to go, and I already have the fridge and the pantry set up for all the other staples. And so, 
I'll show you the last bit of the carrots and then uh, we'll see what our full time is. I'm gonna start it now though from where it went from Instant Pot to oven and then I'll give you that final time and then we'll be good to go. So carrots just beeped in the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and release those. So you can watch the Instant Pot. I'm gonna release them now and then I'm gonna put some aside for the boys so they don't have all the spices and stuff. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roast some for Paul and I. Right now, from when I released the Instant Pot chicken and was chopping the carrots, it's been about 11 minutes. So I think I'm close to like 45 to 50 minutes. Not bad. And then these will really, they're part cooked, so they don't have to roast that long. I just kinda like the caramelization of the maple syrup on them. So maybe another 15 minutes. So I'll be done in literally an hour and like 10 minutes. And I'm gonna show you everything we have ready to go and how quick and easy it is. Okay, I have last one last tip for you. I always get asked, well, how do you store your food to keep it fresh where you wanna eat leftovers? We are big on glass storage. So if you don't have your arsenal of Pyrex or glass storage, I highly recommend that being something you invest in this year to make meal prep easier and to make your food taste better. That and a meat thermometer, you're golden. So if you notice like all of my stuff behind me, it's all in glass. I also like that I can see it. And so when I used to be just wasteful and throwing things out, I would store it in like random Tupperware that you couldn't see in it or like old cool it bowls. And then I just missed the food that was actually prepped and ready to go. So use clear glass and you'll be good to go. And that is a wrap on meal prep. Thinking about protein first, time efficiency, budget efficiency, and oh, hold on. Okay, I'd like to show you this. From the time I started those carrots, 21.47, so finished up the carrots, have everything in glassware, all the dishes are clean, and everything's put away. So that was a total, let's just say, with the Instant Pot Chicken, because this is 22 minutes, let's just say that was another 40. That's literally just over an hour, and I wanna show you everything that's right here. And because I made the method of cooking it super simple, and I made it based on what my family prefers in terms of how I prep protein, and then the carbs and the fats that they like, it was so fast, it was so easy. I, that's it, I hope you go and do it. Okay, let me show you real quick. Check this out. We have your steamed carrots for the boys right here. We have baked chicken right there, Instant Pot chicken, green beans, broccoli, my roasted maple carrots, burgers and ground beef, all done. That is plenty of food to start us out for the week. Easy peasy. Okay, so I know you're probably thinking, Ange, this is great. I saw how you made ingredients and you did it quickly and you focused on protein first and you were thinking about how much protein you and your family needs and your carbs and your fats and how to make variety. But sometimes I understand it's hard to kind of think outside the box of recipes. But if we can get into this mindset where we prep ingredients and we turn it into meals based on our mood with food or our family's mood with food, it makes it so easy to have meals in minutes and to not be wasteful with them. So stay tuned because on a future episode, I am gonna show you my full day of eating with these ingredients. Some that I prepped, some that are convenient ones in the fridge, in the pantry, to give you ideas of how my brain thinks with food. But make meal prep work for you, make it fit into your lifestyle, with your likes and your preferences and the demands of your life, and it will no longer be a stress. It will be an enjoyable process in 2023. So, if you liked today's episode, if you could do, do me a huge favor and give me a thumbs up comment below, let me know what you wanna see more of. Do you wanna see more meal prep, full day of eating, mindset? I'm here to just make sure you have the best possible experience when visiting my channel, and I just wanna say thank you. Looking forward to a great 2023 with you.